Welcome back to Humans in Five. Well, once again, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Those who are celebrating are finalizing their plans, and gripes are strong amongst those who do not do V-Day. No matter where you stand, February 14th is sometimes set aside as a day for romance. And at the base of romance, in many instances, is attraction. Attraction is a major component of human sexuality. Attraction is often the cementing factor in a romantic relationship. It's well acknowledged that there are ranges involved when we think about who we're attracted to. For example, sexologist Alfred Kinsey developed a scale that people can use to demonstrate their level of same or opposite sex attraction. If we look at the scale, you can see that it ranges from exclusively heterosexual to exclusively homosexual, with a range of orientations occurring between these two extremes. In the time since Kinsey, this scale and others like it have become increasingly accepted and commonly used to express who someone is attracted to. But this scale has a gap. It's great at expressing who we're attracted to, but doesn't incorporate how we express that attraction. This was noticed by Langdon Parks, who wanted to find a greater range of ways to express how we feel when we're attracted to someone. Parks developed the purple-red scale of attraction, and it looks like this. It seems a little confusing off the bat, but it is a clever way of figuring out how you experience attraction. Attractions are categorized by orientation as well as attraction type. These attraction types range from asexual, where someone experiences no attraction besides friendship or aesthetic attraction, to hypersexual, where sexual relations are the be-all and end-all of any relationship. However, there is also a range of attraction types between these two ends of the spectrum. For some people, they don't experience any sexual attraction per se when they're in a relationship, but are willing to engage in sex for other reasons, such as children or to please a partner. For others, relationships start with sexual desire, but then blossom with intimacy and companionship, all of which remain central to the relationship. This scale may seem a little overwhelming at first glance, but when you take a closer look, it really does help clarify how people express their sexuality in deeper terms than most takes on sexual orientation. But why is it important to know where you lie on the scale of how you're attracted to people? For people seeking new relationships, it can help to have terms that help you better understand how you and a new partner approach relationships. If you're in longer term relationships, a greater understanding of how you feel and seek pleasure can cement a bond. More than anything, tools like this scale help open the lines of communication when people are discussing sexuality. Communication is the single biggest contributor to our happiness in romantic and sexual settings. It's worth remembering that the brain is our biggest sex organ and we can engage our brain by communicating what we want. Often the happiest relationships are those with the most open lines of communication. Whether or not you experience attraction in the same way as your partner, communicating how you feel can provide fruitful room for discussion and growth. You don't have to agree, but clear communication can help you find a happy middle ground. And as always, we've said it before and we'll say it again, the most important part of any relationship is that everyone is consenting and on the same page. So in the build up to V-Day, we hope you take a moment to reflect on how you experience attraction and what revs your engine. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Humans in Five. And don't forget to subscribe.